up. I'm not officially recording. I take that back. Okay, now I'm officially recording. Hello. Okay, cool. Hey, um, this is our first lesson together. Um, obviously, we've talked about melee plenty of time before, so I mean, you already kind of understand my whole deal. I know where you're at and stuff, but uh, I mean, regardless, it'll be cool having it be more formal. Um, I think I'm kind of at a weird point with melee right now, where it's like, I sort of like you, you like kind of freaked earlier. Well, you were jokingly I was, freaking. I was, I was joking. freaking. I was definitely freaking. <laughs> <laughs> you I'll were, admit you it. Were, I'll admit it. Uh, you were freaking earlier today, but I was thinking about I do sort of identify. It's like, I like, I'm at a point with Melee where it's like, okay, I'm playing it and like, I'm having fun with it, but I also, I just can't justify continuing to play without like trying to get better in some fashion. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, I'm at a point where. Okay, so I've been what I've been back on the six for like two two months ish now, and yeah. like my experience is like, okay, every like two weeks I have some sort of like emotional realization about my gameplay, and then like I work on, and then I just like play, and I don't look at anything, and I don't practice, mm -hmm. and then like it improves, but it's kind of totally random, and whether or not it sticks is also like a whole other thing entirely. So yeah. it's like, oh, okay, and so it's like. This isn't fun anymore. Like yeah, yeah. I, I do have. It, it is still fun, which is why I'm doing it. Like, which is why it's still fine to do it. Mm. But that isn't really sustainable in the sense that, like, okay, like, if I'm going to, I like play like for an average. I don't play every day, but it's like I play like every other day, or I play enough to where it's like okay, like maybe I should structure my time a little bit and like give this yeah. a real shot. And I'm not gonna lie, like watching tournaments is like, oh shit, like. <sighs> I just see bums doing well. Like, <laughs> fuck, man. If these bums can, like, win, like, why can't I? And then I just... Uh, I, mean, I, just I totally agree. <laughs> I feel super similar to watching tournaments. I'm like, man. Not to be specific, but I watch and I'm like, wow. I feel like if I picked up a controller and practiced for a month, I could very easily be one of these people that uh, are yeah. so well-regarded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's how I feel right now. So it's like, I think overall my attitude towards melee is like, okay, well, I've sort of, I've sort of hit the point where it's like, I don't even think I'm incapable necessarily in the sense that like, in the sense that I think that, I mean, you know, I've talked in practice before. It's like I, mm -hmm. I can grasp concepts and I like have a generally reasonable attitude towards the game, but it's never consistent because I think you know, like, for all sorts of reasons, both in and out of the game. So it's, like, I think at this point, I'm tired of trying to do it on my own, and I'm ready to, like, pay somebody to either keep me accountable or, you know, or, like, or in instances where it's not just a matter of accountability and I'm truly not understanding something, having mm -hmm. somebody to help me to, like, structure a practice around it or, like, frame frame my thinking differently around it. Because mm -hmm. it's also the case that, like, I'm just an adult, and I have a lot of other shit. Yeah, you have so responsibilities. Would, yeah, so I would, like, I just need, it's like, I, I don't have a choice. Like, I have to pay in some measure to, like, get the process a little bit more efficient. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I totally agree. I feel like this is a good opportunity to do that. And with having actual responsibilities, Melee, I, I've, I mean, I say this now, but with me doing things and actually having a relatively busy schedule, I've been like, wow. I do not feel like I can just sit down and play the melee game or do the melee things kind of whenever I want to. I like have to actually have like you know a plan. So I I, uh, I agree with everything you've said. It all makes sense. Yeah, and it's like I like yeah, it's like I see Kyle Crotto doing well, and he's he's like really good, and but he also like has like sixteen hours a day to like. Well, he's not that much, but like he has a hell he has hell of time to put into the game if he wants to, mm -hmm. and it's like I I don't know like and I I respect and admire him a lot as a player, so it's like. Oh, I would actually love it. Like if I could even get a little bit as good as him, you yeah. know, in some fraction of the time. So yeah. So yeah, I think my overall goals in terms of like just sort of formally stating it's like okay, like let's see if I can find some way to look at videos that such that I can get like reasonably actionable things out of them. Mm -hmm. So like develop it, like getting to the point where I can consistently do that on my own or with a little bit of assistance from you. Uh, so like finding things to practice and getting a practice routine around that like um i think uh that's pretty much the only goal i have for right now i think that's a pretty reasonable bar to set like 
getting better at analysis with you in a way that I can find things. Because I think everything else falls into place after that. It's like once yeah. you find things to practice, then you will want to test them on people. Yep. And then once you test them on people, then you'll be like, oh, this is going well or this is going not well. And then like you have more ideas and then you can do. I agree. I, I feel like once you get into the cycle, at least that's been my experience. Once I like get into the groove in the cycle, it's all like just clockwork. But you have to figure out how to like do it well at yeah, first. I'm someone who has no problem grinding shit out. Like, there was mm -hmm. time, I mean, back when, like, three or four years ago, when I moved to North Carolina, I had, like, when and when I was dedicating more of my time to Melee, it's like, I would wake up <laughs> at 6 o'clock before work to, like, grind <laughs> ledge dashes and grind yeah. tech chases. So it's like, I don't have a problem, like, doing the hour a day that I need to. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have a problem doing that at all. So I feel like the just the very first step of getting better at analysis and, like, and getting into that groove is really important yeah. to me. Yeah, I agree. I... Yeah, so... Oh, and I guess the last thing I'll say, just for the sake of... I, I think I've talked to you about this in DMs, and mm. you and I have talked about this a little bit too when we, whenever we talk about Melee, is that like, I think a lot of the parts of the game aren't super intuitive to me, or if they are, then like, I'm not confident that they are. So mm -hmm. I think that's like... As like a more specific idea of where I want to be, it's like I want the analysis to to like make the game more intuitive for me. I think like a good example is like when I'm look. I I think I'm. I if somebody like tells me or if somebody like asks me to evaluate a decision, like I can consider all. I'm I generally have a good idea of all the factors. Like okay, percent yeah. like like relative stage positioning, like whether or not this will combo or you know like. What kinds of options the other? I've like been playing and watching melee for long enough that like I could probably, you know, give you some general sense of whether this is good or bad. But I think like, uh, I think doing it like efficiently isn't the right word, but like doing it in a way that feels practical is sort of not accessible to me. Mm -hmm. So I think I think like again like that's probably the most specific I can get in terms of my goals right now is like making the game more intuitive for me. Yeah. So. Um, I think that that is a good goal, but I might have thoughts on reframing necessarily intuitive, because I think it's not about, well, I guess, and at the end of the day, it is about making the game more intuitive on a level, but the way that I see it is it's like finding a process or a method or something of that nature, you know, something that lines up with the things that we've been talking about that, like, makes sense for you to approach things through like a framework that is intuitive yeah. right because i think you know sometimes things in the game just aren't intuitive and i guess i also you know to add on the like intuition as like a concept i guess the more you learn obviously the different things become intuitive right just by virtue yeah. of understanding and experience but um yeah i feel like okay that's pretty much how i'd approach it but i do i mean generally agree that the end goal is you will end up being have better intuition for either how like approaching the game generally. Yeah. yeah. No, I and I agree that like intuition probably means a little bit different to everybody. So it's like the more we talk about like the more we talk and the more we play and the more we sort of like go through this process of being less, I'm sure we'll be able to be much more discreet about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, anyway, I guess we could just go into it. Honestly, I don't really have. I guess I, I could agree. have, I could have thoughts on stuff like, um, like practice routine, etc. But I don't know how valuable that really is to just like drop. <laughs> so I think it's probably a better approach for us to look at the replay and and then think about, like I think like having specific i like having specific items that we can, like cite as examples or whatever when talking about the practice routine generally will probably make it click a little bit more for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Cool, I'll uh, load up the thing and then start streaming. Okay. <gasps> I think of my thoughts on this my thoughts on this matchup, right? It's I play replay versus Fox. Uh yeah. my number one thing with Fox or Sheik right now is that like there's just like it's just Fox in general. I think there's just so many things that like whenever when I think I can honestly sound out that like my brain just turns off. It's like he's so fast and there's so many things that I can do that he can do that I'm not really I'm not always on it in terms of like reacting mm -hmm. and then like but it's like i'm playing so it's i can't just like fix that yeah yeah um 
and I'll try to point out the spots where I feel like my brain was turned off because I have I these I played these like yesterday I want to say this yesterday so yeah so I'll be able to pretty con confidently tell you like when I just went brain off mode. Mm -hmm. uh... Okay. Uh, I mean, honestly, the only thoughts I have towards that are like the main thing because I, I I totally understand playing against Fox. He super fast and there's so many spots that end up being unreactable that like you wouldn't expect in the case because you know there's not really any other character that could like fulfill that the requirements to make that the case um but i think that the thing that makes it not feel like a oh my br like for you to like not lose focus in those spots i guess is that like the better you understand like either Fox's intentions in any given situation or, like, his actual threats, you know, when you're in the threat range, etc. Et like, when you're actually engaged, I feel like that makes it a lot less, like, unclear or, like, scary. Because it's like, oh, you know, I think a, a big spot is, like... I can't think of... It'd be too hard to explain with my words. Yeah. But there's a lot of spots where, like, you know, Sheik lands from, like, an auto-cancel aerial and Fox is, like... You know, we could say the distance between, like, these two side platforms, right? And he's, yeah. like, essentially standing still. Maybe not dashing forward. And you're like, yeah. oh, fuck. Fox could just running shy like the spacing. I, yeah. I'm, yeah, i like, freaking out. But it's also, like, when you are, like, if you are, when you, like, end up in that spot, you should be like, oh, I understand that I'm engaged in a mix-up rather than it being, like, true neutral. And I feel like that's, like... Yeah. the thing that needs to be discerned. Because if you can tell when you're engaged and when you're actually just kind of chilling on the screen, it makes it a lot less scary. Because, you know, when you're actually at the spacing and you think Fox is going to run forward, oh, you, just, you just forward till they jump again and call it a fucking yeah. day, right? Yeah. I My thought, my immediate reaction to that is that I... Yeah, I think the, the, thought, the thought that I had was was that I fully agree with that in the sense that a lot i think when i'm when i feel most confused is when i don't know when i'm playing for the current spacing or when i'm trying to play for the next situation i don't know of a more concrete way to word it than that mm -hmm. but like i feel like if we talked about what his actual threats are or what like whether or not there's an actual mix up being played yeah. that would help me immensely because then i because then i very concretely you know okay i am now playing against the mix up that's happening in the situation or i'm trying to reduce his mix-up in, in the next situation, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Uh, we can just get into it. Um, yeah. Nice. My tech skill's really bad, by the way. It's okay. I just real. Just immediately bad tech skill moment. Yeah, uh, I just wasn't going to talk. Oh, it's okay. I think this is all fine. They need to be messed up. Going to top there is totally fine. Doing runoff. I think if you're going to do a runoff like this, and you're not going to, like, fall through the platform... There's no reason not to just do like runoff needle towards center, especially when the fox is dash dancing right here, right? Because mm -hmm. the way that I see it is like, you're going to end up on platform anyways, and it's going to take a bit, and he could technically hit you. So it's like, if you really are the sun to land, why not just throw a needle out and actually get to cover the space? Because if he stays in the space and you throw a needle, guess what? You now get an advantageous like mix up, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think like otherwise, if you're running off the platform like this, a thing you could do is, you know, obviously, fast forward to the ground and just land and play the mix up from there. And if you did that, then you probably could have gotten like decent pressure on this like full hot rising bear or something, right? Does that make sense? Sorry, so if I didn't run off needle, what else did you have? You, you would run off and fast fall to the ground. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then if you did that in this specific position, then you might have been able to pressure this full hot bear. Right? Yeah, and by pressure his full hot bear, you mean like like, I have some small amount of frame advantage so I can decide to jump. Or, yeah, yeah. Like, It'd pretty much be like, you have frame advantage as he's landing or whatever, so then he has to respect your threats, right? Because, you know, you can do something first and whatever, right? Just frame advantage stuff. Yeah. Oh, I, like, ran away. I don't know what I was worried about. I don't think dashing away was honestly that bad. I feel like dashing to the right here made sense because what you could do is shield drop and fast fall to the ground. But I am pretty confused by this like wave dash back. I feel like you realize that you shouldn't be running off the platform, but I feel like you could have told literally from now that you probably shouldn't run off the platform. 
I think I had already decided that I was gonna dash off. I I think it is exactly as you said the first time. It's like I real I didn't want to. I realized way too late that I didn't want to come off. Yeah. Because then you had like no ability to play around this up tilt, right? Because it could have happened yes. is if you like went to the ground early. He's like up because this is all a mix up at this point, right? And he's like up tilting here. You could really just boost grab it by the once you hit the ground, right? And so it's kind of important to realize that, like, you know, Sheik isn't the best at, like, actually playing out this, like, specific um, angle, right? She just doesn't have anything that hits here. So given that, you know, you could shape the way you approach this situation on the platform to, like, okay, well, I have thing. The things I really want to do are either get to the ground at, like, a decent spacing from Fox, which would be chill dropping over here, right? Because look at the distance between you. Or you'd want to, like set up some sort of wall here with like you know shield drop bear or like stay on the platform and shield so you could threaten shield drop or like you know even like full hop needle could be a thing that you could do uh-huh but is, like, so it's like a th is the thinking ahead thing i guess yeah kind of yeah I, I, yeah i think it's thinking ahead because you could see that he's bearing and then you get yeah. to make a decision and it's like given from this spot what are the things that you want to do and see if you want to get to the ground you want to stay on the platform and maybe like Lead him being aggressive with like full hop nair or something, or like you want to um do like a delayed action or something, or maybe like you want to like read him jumping up here in some way, which could also be done with you know shielding full hop, like doing like jump needle or run off shield drop bear or whatever. But like generally, you're playing in this area, I guess, is the takeaway okay. is that given kind of what's happened, you don't get to take this spot right just because Sheik doesn't have the angle of attack. Yes, I think for. I think if I had, if I, th I think if I recognize that I don't have ways to attack him from this position, like earlier, then, yeah. then yeah, okay. Because I think I, I think uh, it's like kind of as it's as you said for sure. It's like what once I started dashing, as soon as I input the dash towards him, I was like, oh wait, he's in the middle up tilting. But it's like that was that's it. This specific position had already started when I was landing, so yeah, I need to know that ahead of time and not. I mean, dashing back is probably fine because I could shield drop from. Yeah, I think dashing but... back was the good. I think the dash back's really good because it puts enough space between you and the fox. Because you don't, if he wasn't doing full hop rising bear, you don't want to be like right here. Being further yeah. away makes it easier to set up decent spacings against him. Like contrary to popular belief, but not pop popular belief, but contrary to like your immediate intuition, because she does kind of want to be close to the fox sometimes because she's yeah. kind of scrambling. But, but he's like at a percent. At where like I can't really do anything other than aerial hook grab him. So. Yeah, yeah, and so at this point you're kind of just clipping him whenever you can, and so you make space. It makes moves like your bear way more, like it works a lot better because it actually can be used to zone rather than getting hit with the inside hit or something. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think that just the the main takeaway is simply just that like in these spots where you end up around on platform and Fox is in like center stage doing his thing or whatever you don't have that many angles to like attack him aggressively so the way that you should approach the situation should be more oriented around like the goal of getting to the ground and being able to play a mix up on him doing something preemptive or like staying on platform to defend against him being aggressive right yeah okay and i think it ends up being pretty important because you see here it's like okay you go back and play neutral but I guarantee you my Sheik would have literally have shield dropped here and been like, I'm going to wait for it up tilt. And yeah. then I probably would have got, or I'm going to wait for a shine. And then I would have like a good mix up. But instead, right. he just he gets it back up from tilt. there or whatever, then it's whatever he's like, he can't meaningfully hit me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because this spot is so awkward for me. I'm like, he didn't do anything and I'm cornered. Yeah. Yeah, you had to wave dash back. And then you had to wave, you have to move back again because he's like in your threat range. Yeah, and this, oh, this spot okay. honestly isn't that great. Yeah, I, I think jumping there is pretty greedy. I think what you should honestly do is worry about like getting your shield up and like rolling or like you know going back to side platform. Because the way I see it is like I think this jump is already relatively unlikely to hit because of how far you are into the corner. Yes, but it's also like if it hits, you just get to play another scramble anyways, right? It's not like you combo him because he's at zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he could like hold down and like make, play mix up mm -hmm. or punish for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I heard your alarm. See. So you... Yeah. One second. Okay.
Okay. Okay, so you're saying the fair is fairly aggressive here. It's not likely to hit, and also given the percent, it, I like. I'm just gonna be in a weird position anyway afterwards. Yeah, it doesn't accomplish that much, and I I don't think it should line up with your or I don't think it lines up with what your goal should be. Your goal should be to get we say get in the center stage, right? Yeah, I think in this moment I was just thinking that I. I think my my for some reason the most direct way to get to the middle is to hit him. Mm -hmm. And sometimes but, it is. Well, he's at zero percent. more specific. Yeah, I agree. Because zero percent, it's like. Nothing you do with your aerials will actually meaningfully get you to the other side of the stage. It'll just let you play maybe sometimes an advantageous mix-up on the side of the stage that you're on, right? Now, if he's at, like, knockdown percent, it's completely different, right? He yeah. gets hit, he gets comboed maybe, or maybe you get to go in the center, something happens, and it's way better. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Yeah, this shield grab's also bad. Just because, like, you know... One, the way that I see it is if you're going to shield grab, never do it at the timing after shine. You ever do it, unless you have a specific read, obviously. This is like caveats galore. But um, the way that I see it is like generally, if I'm going to approach shield grabbing, I either shield grab the aerial directly, which you couldn't have done, or. Oh, I was trying to CC grab, I think. That would make way more sense. But you also delayed it so much to where it came out after the shine hit. Yeah, I, which is I think, why I think your shield grab. I also like that. Did I jump into him or something? Or like I yeah, was airborne you, or something, right? Oh, uh, what happened here? Like something made it weird. You just like got in there and out of your like landing because you you like started standing up. If you look at the frames, crouch, 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 and look, you're gonna start standing, and you get hit. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. So that's like okay. weird. Yeah. Okay. So can you explain to me like if I was trying to CC in that situation, I should have just what kept holding down. Um, you can't. Can I do that? So I what happens? It's so what happens specifically is that since you're at such a low percent, or I guess the initial angle. part is that your hit hurt box is super short because you're landing, right? Mm -hmm. And so because of that, instead of getting hit with a hard nair because you'd be standing, you get hit with a soft nair. And so then since oh. you're also at three percent, you get sacra angled, so you actually uh, can't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Okay, that helps because I didn't, I didn't. Well, okay, I knew about Sakurai angle, and I knew that I could mess with the CC grab stuff, but I didn't know that in this specific situation, because I landed and because I got shorter, he hit me with a weak nair, and therefore yep. my timing was super. Okay. Yeah, you weren't able to actually do the thing you wanted to do because it was. Yeah, and I think that's something to actually be aware of as Sheik, because it. I mean, this matters. What if he did, like, nair grab and just read that you're going to shield or something? And then he, you literally get comboed to death, right? It's like, yes. small little things like this in the Sheik matchup, or the Fox matchup as Sheik, actually, like, matter. Because Fox gets so much value off random things not going your way. So, from this position, instead of shield grabbing, like, let's say, uh, let's say I'm aware of the situation, I'm like, okay, I shield it. Not that, so from here, it's like, what do you, like what what will he do? He'll um, shine usually. Like ninety five percent of foxes shine there. Yeah, probably. he always every fox just shines after the snare because they need to be safe, right? And so you just time your roll for after the shine, pretty much. You either roll or you continue holding shield and maybe try and get like a lucky shield grab on a bad nair, which would have worked here honestly because he meant to do short hop nair, um, uh -huh. which is funny. Okay. But so that's like those are pretty much your options. I personally would always choose. I think rolling. Yeah. You can also do wave dash out of shield stuff. Um, sometimes wave dash out of shield goes under Fox doing Nair. Um, so you could wave dash out of shield after the shot. I think that's pretty inconsistent because if he drills, you get BTFO'd. Um, yeah. But it could be a way. And it also, what happens is if you wave dash forward, then it also gives you the opportunity to interact with him doing like shine wave dash back potentially. But okay. that's like the smaller part of the mix up. The more important part is just roll, honestly. Okay, and I mean, can you, like, actually, we don't have to go super deep in there. I was going to say, what if what if he reads my roll from there, I guess? Uh, then you would just, like, wave dash down or continue holding shield. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, yes, 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 I see. Yeah. And if he reads your, this is also where wave dash is good, because if he reads your roll and you wave dash forward, you are just, he's not going to, like, see that, or be able to see that you wave dash, right? So you could just wave dash forward, grab, wave dash forward, up to, wave dash forward, whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
by the way, just as a sort of like lesson mm-hmm. thing or like my tendency, like I think this kind of I mean I I think talking through the options is important, but I think sometimes I I can get easily caught up in the weeds about exploring all the different avenues. So you should feel free to tell me when it's not super important to explore all the options because like we could easily spend a very long <laughs> time. You know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I totally get it. Okay, I can do that. And in this case, it's like to know to like roll to the middle in this situation. So yeah. I don't, I don't mind that we talked about all of it, but yeah, good. Uh, I feel like here you reacted pretty poorly off your. I feel like at this point, you probably should have been able to see that he had like run off, mm-hmm. and then done like dash bear towards center or something. I think I don't have. I didn't have any confidence by less dash. Mm-hmm. So that's part of it too. It's like I should just. If I'm gonna do ledge dash, some percentage of the time I should be confident that I did it, and then dash bear to center or something. Yeah, because what I what I think is when I'm on ledge here, I literally see him do this dash forward, and I'm like, oh, he's gonna run off. So literally from all of this time, I would just Whoa. now I'd be ready to bear. Because you you know if he's gonna run off, it's like okay, he's gonna run off and immediately double jump, or he's gonna run off and like shine stall something, and him shine stalling doesn't beat me doing this bear, right? Yeah, I think, and I don't even, he can't even land into me, so the up tilt is not yeah. super amazing. Yeah, the up tilt, like, doesn't actually hit that well behind you. Technically, you have a little kickback, which I guess yeah. didn't work, but, like, you know, it doesn't actually, unless you do turn around up tilt, which you can do, but I don't think that it's that be, great of an option. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think bear just, like, insta kills. Yes, I agree. Okay. Yeah, it's just bear in this position. And you said you reacted to the dash forward, right? Yes, I see the dash forward and, and like, assume that he's going to have to double jump. Because he will have to double jump. He can't run off the stage and not double jump, right? He'll die. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I get drilled here, and then he... How did I get pushed to... I just... Do I snap to ledge from here? Yeah, oh, you get, he shines you, and then you snap to ledge, and then... Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah. Can you, like, kind of imagine... As this situation plays out, doing the ledge dash and like bearing well, after. I've, I've done that. I've done that ledge dash bear before. Yeah, right. So it's I know, like I know what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. Can you go back? I need. Can you like let, let the situation like go back and let the situation play a few times so that way I can program yeah. my memory. It's like okay, he, I get drilled here. I snap the ledge. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. super clear. Yep. Okay, nice. Um, and I, I know it kind of we've talked about three situations, and it seems like I'm being kind of excruciating with you know. Or scrutinizing, I guess, the detail I go into, but it's like I know that you obviously know how to look at the screen. I know a lot of things about like what you're able to do, so I think it's important to actually just kind of go through and like cover these situations and like look at them, look at how you should approach them fundamentally, and like because I think all the things that we've talked about thus far, you can do. It's not like I'm introducing like a whole new concept, right? So that's kind of why I'm being like very, very scrutinizing and picking out like almost everything I see that goes wrong. Yeah. Because honestly, it feels like knowledge gap, and there are. I mean, so far, I mean, I think we've had we have like one or two like larger takeaways, which I mean, that's kind of the goal. As we look at all these small situations, and I like point out, oh, you could do this better, but like, I want there to be like larger things that you could obviously take away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What did I try to? Oh, I tried to like. Yeah. You tried to like jump something. You can actually. Like, this is something I do a decent amount, but you could do up air, um, like, kind of early. Him, I think. If you were to do the fair, you'd have to do backflip, because that kind of, like, makes sense. Because hurt box. Yeah, hurt box. You need, to, you need to, like, move out of the way of the drill, because you see how, like, right now you're directly under it. You need to, like, yes. end up back here, so your fair swoops from behind and then hits it, so you don't I did it. not realize, does drill go beneath the platform here, or is it just yes. that my hurt? Yes, yes. I it, did not know that. Yeah. I thought it that goes very like, slightly below if you look. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I see. It, it hits your head right, right bef- before you even get through the platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. Right. Right. It, yeah, and it this landing hitbox hits like right around here. Okay, I didn't realize yeah. that. I thought that the drill ended up above the platform. If I knew that, then I would have simply like tried to dash bear or do something yeah, different. Dash bear is good. Doing backflip fair is good. What you can do is you could also do an early up air, and a lot of the time. Just trade with the drill because it's not like Fox has options from the spot. Really, okay. it's like once he's committed to the jump and you're already like spaced for the jump, you could literally just be like, "Oh, he jumped full hop up air or short hop up air," yeah. and just like hit him. And if he double jumps, who cares? He's not going to hit you, right? He doesn't have options. Yeah. 
I think that's twice now where like there's situations where he's sort of like jumped above me and I didn't have a good like good plan or we'll, or... yeah good plan it's like the ledge situation where he jumped above me when I was on the ledge and I didn't mm -hmm. have like didn't have a plan and then this one it's like slight lit well it's not I'm not on the ledge so I have way more options but like the principle it's like I the should... same thing it's like he's yeah. above you you don't have like you don't understand the exact thing you need to do and I think I mean we could we could start looking at more positions like that because I think it's actually a really important issue because Fox yeah. being above you is obviously like a difficult position to play out even though it yeah. should be relatively advantageous most of the time you have yeah, to play it in a very flexible way you can't just like box up tilt every time or whatever yeah it's like that situation we talked about like maybe six or seven months ago where i was getting frustrated with the fox moving around on the platforms yeah, and it's yep. and then uh, and it's like i know i have to bear i know i have to position to bear him but i don't know how to set up my ground movement in a way that leaves you flexible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah okay yep that makes sense oh you missed your dash back good roll oh that's good bear yeah this is oh, good oh what happened i know what happened the second one i don't know what happened there and then, really did you do it late? Yeah, you did yeah. the bear late. Yeah, you just have to do it earlier. Oh, I I have no conf I had no confidence in the spacing. I also didn't fast fall. I didn't like fall very well from the first bear. I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, yeah you, like... you didn't fast fall, but I think I ended up making the timing line up pretty perfectly. Oh really? Okay, so I should yeah. just do the bear earlier. You just have to do yeah. The whole thing with like bearing fox jumping is you simply just have to have faith that your back air is a big move. And if okay. you were back airing in all these strings that you weren't, your back air simply would have been here and been Oh, yeah, big. if I started it right now, or slightly earlier, maybe like one or two frames earlier. Yeah, yeah, or... it'd just be like, you're bare big, you're bare hit. It's it's great, right? Is there any aiming nuance with that? Like, do I need to drift a certain way, or should I just... Uh, if you're doing it... I mean, the it, it, I guess the angle that you want to be at is like, this is the angle, right? Okay. This is like... It's that forty-five degree up angle, I guess. That is Got like it. a so good like angle. So like doing instant bear in place or something. Yeah, okay. and you see how that angle is maintained throughout this entire thing until he gets to hit you, right? It's like that. Yeah. That's like the kind of the sweet spot. Okay. Yeah, and you just do an instant resing bear. Um, here oh, actually, cool. yeah, I'll let it play out. But this is a, a spot where you like set up your movement poorly. Yeah, okay, That ha this happens a lot, so I do want us to talk through this. Like, this happens a lot where I feel like, okay, now we're in this weird situation where he has slight frame advantage, and then I feel like I have to... I feel really threatened by his nair. Yeah. Even though when I'm looking at this now, he's quite far away from me. Yeah. But, yeah. like, I feel really pressured, because I feel like if I go to the side platform and he reads it, he can hit me. Yes, yep. Right? Yeah. And so, and so it's like, what do I... And I have to somehow deal with him coming at me so i don't really know what to do here i guess i don't know how to think about the situation yeah um okay so i guess we'll i could start with just by laying out like the, the groundwork where it's like foxy's decisions that he makes in this position are he nares right at you he running shines right at you maybe slightly past you or he like reads you going to the platform in some capacity full hop nares or he full hop uppers the side platform and then there's one extra thing and that's he stops and he like waits for you to do something on the ground essentially that's like the entire mix up tree of this position. And I think this like frame advantage spot is really, 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 really common in Sheik Fox. It's so common. Yes, it's really common. And so Sheik's whole thing that she does here is pretty much jumping is bad because if you jump, you actually don't have enough time to like. Well, I guess technically, if you do jump rising fair, you hit Nair, but that's like, you know, you're doing rising fair. If Fox does anything else, you're going to die. Um, but, like, pretty much if you jump, you don't have enough time to, like, set up, like, a decent timed aerial. So jumping yeah. ends up not being that good. Um, yeah. Full hopping is good because it puts you on the platform, right, at, at the very least. Yeah. Um, you can get red, obviously, and foxes do read it. But you could also do, like, full hop, back, like, do full hop backflip and then, like, space yourself further back. So the fox actually, like, has to travel further to hit you, right? Yes. Yep. Um, and then... At the last thing is pretty much just like four tilt in place or wave dash back four tilt. And that's like, and I guess there's also the, you do like dash attack forward or boost grab forward to read him waiting. Well, that's like the entire dichotomy, right? Does that make sense? Where it's like, you either attack here, you wave dash back, attack here, or you jump to platform or you read him waiting, right? Okay. And th this is just a mix up, right? Yes. Like, this is literally I just 
raw mix up, nothing you could do to make it not a mix up. It's just so he's just so far, so it makes me feel like he there is no mix up, but it's it's just that it's Fox. Fox. <laughs> this is like Fox running shine is like from here to here unreactable. It's just Fox. Fox is a yeah, demon. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and what did he select? Um, let's there, see. Oh, he does delay. Um, he, yeah. He does delay. Yeah, so he does. Right, and so that. Yes. Yeah. And so, what would have been good against this is jumping the platform would have been good. Full hopping, um, wave dashing back would have been good. Because uh, if you do wave dash back for tilt, and then he like does that delay, he can't actually get you before you can get your shield up. Right, he has to then delay. He has to to beat that. He has to then delay more. But then, okay. Yeah, and then, yeah. But if he did instant for tilt, he would have beat it pretty badly. And if you jumped, um, you might have you might have been able to actually get a decent decent jump setup, like short hop setup. But I'm not 100 percent sure. You could do like backflip, like late fair stuff, and I think it also beats him doing like the uh, one dash dance delay. Right, and. I sort of, what did I do? I like. You did like a weird like dash back and then you like wanted to face forward, forward, so you did. Yeah. Yeah. Which sometimes is good, but not in this position where you need to be fast. Yes. yes. Because, hold on. I dash, I did dash back, dash forward, I think. Yeah, dash forward, dash forward, or dash back, dash forward, wave dash back. I think in this situation, I always, I feel like. I see foxes sort of wait a really long time in the middle mm -hmm. a lot, so I, I think what it is, I think like I have this idea in my mind that if I'm dashing back and dashing forward, that what I'll be able to do is respond to him just waiting by boost grabbing him or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, there's like so many other things that he could be doing in that position, I guess. Yeah, I also think that if you really think that he's just going to be waiting in center, why not just boost grab right now? Right. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's. I feel a, like why idea. why give him more time to do things before you decide to do your initial like part of the mix up, right? E yes. Yeah. Yes, that makes sense to me. Because that just means something will most likely change if you give him time. Um, right. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And in this specific position, what what makes me really think that like the dash back dash forward we have dash back was bad is that you just simply don't have time. Because what made this bad is that by the time you're out of your wave dash lag, the fox was already just, like, about to hit you, right? Yeah. And it's like, and that should not be the case. The level either. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. That shouldn't, like, be the case. Like, what should happen is you should be in that exact position, but, like, now. And it's like, you... If I wanted to do that idea, yeah, okay. If you wanted to, like you know, end up in that spot. And how you'd end up in that spot is just by wave dashing back, right? Yes. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. So, so like, you. time is of the essence, especially in this, like, in this kind of position, right? I think there are spots where you're really far away from Fox and you can do, like, the dash back, dash forward, wave dash back stuff to, like, pr use a different timing to set up, like, you yeah. being in that position, like, that, you know, facing him but far away kind of thing. But this is not that spot. You have to do it faster because you're in a more immediate like uh, threat zone. Right. Okay. So I should. So the takeaway here is I should be more efficient. I guess. No. Uh, I don't. I don't know if there's an overall takeaway. Honestly, I think it's really just like be aware of this mix up and like understand that the op like the, uh, the options you have. So it's forward tilt in place. We have dash back forward tilt. Jump to platform. And then, like, some forward moving action. Maybe wave dash forward, forward tilt, maybe boost grab, maybe dash stack. Okay. And those are, like, that's what I see. Technically, walk also works as a forward moving option. But, like, those are the things that I see as, like, your main options. There's other things you really could do. Like, you could do, like, full hop forward stuff. But that's, like, more nuanced. And it's not really, like, the core of the mix-up. That's, like, yeah. layered stuff. So it doesn't really matter. Right. Okay. I see. Yeah. So just recognizing that this mix-up will happen and sort of getting a sense of when I would want to use each one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just knowing that, like, when you end up in this spot, when you have this, like, di frame disadvantage against Fox and you're, like, around this spacing, you are engaged in the mix-up and you have to either stop him from running forward or whatever thing, right? It's just, okay. yeah. that's, like, the, that's the, the real takeaway. Was, I don't know. I ended up on the other side. Oh, I messed up. Uh, oh. oh, that was kind of troll. 
Yeah, I, I think I think that fair was or the jump was pretty bad. I feel like when you're wave dashing back, this is like a pretty good spot. Like this is like a spot for you to like do wave dash back, walk forward or something, right? Or like wave dash forward or not wave dash, wave dash back, dash forward, crouch or something. I feel like jump like ends up not being that great actually. Can we go back to the farther? So it's like so it's like right here. Like after so after I did that first dash back. Like, yeah. This one, yeah, right here. Yeah. Okay, so it's like here, there's no mix up happening, right? Like, he nope. just landed from an area. There's absolutely no mix up. Okay, so I think here, I like, I feel on some level when I'm playing that this isn't that there is no mix up happening, mm -hmm. but I think my mind is so fixated on like, I need to do something here. But, but what you're saying is that this is just neutral. Yeah, this is super duper duper raw neutral. Like, you. I guess technically you have frame advantage because you're actionable and he's in narrow Yeah, line, but it's like but not it's meaningful. Like, you're not going to do anything with it. You can't even like get him in a bad position, right? Okay. So it's like I dash forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you I dash forward and then you do the, the wave dash back jump. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why I did that. I think the way that, I mean, I think doing that's fine. The big dash back's fine. Doing dash forward, wave dash back is totally fine too. But you have to like not jump. <laughs> Because jump is just, like, slower. That's yeah, that's the really main takeaway. Yeah, he, like, did, like, a weird timing thing and, like, tried to do, like, nair drift back or whatever. But I feel like in this spot, you just don't have time to actually jump since you're moving forward, right? Does that make sense? Since you do dash forward jump, I guess the, oh. the main concept is that when you do jump, it takes a lot of time because you have to go up, mm -hmm. wait, come down, and then do an aerial if you want to, like, time it for the ground, right? And yeah. so, that means that doing a jump takes a long time. And so that means that since something takes a long time, you make up for time with space. So you do jumps that further spacings away. Like right? backflip or, like, drift back. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that, yeah, makes, creates space, so your jump ends up being more reasonable or something, right? But, um, the... The, the big thing is that, like, since you dashed forward jump should end up being way less likely like you should do that way way less often because you now just like close the space that you were going to use to like the that would make up for the time right yeah i think okay i see yeah you're you're okay i just want to make sure i get this so it's like i'm far away from him we're playing pure neutral and like Jumping is fine, but if I if I'm dashing forward to try to take that space, probably not a good idea to also jump forward. Yeah. Okay. Unless you're gonna end up right on top of him with the jump, right? Because that's a pretty bad position for Fox. But in this in the sense, spot, that I can have to tilt him afterwards or whatever. Yeah, yeah. In in the sense that you'd be point blank with him, you'd be landing on top of him with your fair. But, but here I can say I can say for for sure watching this back that I had no plans and I just wanted to hit him here. Yeah, I didn't really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. That was. Yeah, but yeah, does it make sense that like I feel like after this wave dash, a better thing to do would to like either start walking forward from it or like dash forward crouch, because it lets you yeah. take the space that you wanted to take by jumping, but you could do it way more safe or more safely, right? Hmm. I feel like man, there's a lot of spots where I feel like you should be forward tilting and you have not forward tilted at all. I yeah, I know. I feel like that one was a really easy forward tilt. I'm surprised I didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. This bear, once he goes in, it's like you literally just get the forward tilt in front of you and there's nothing the fox can do about it, right? Right, because even if he cause even if he moves away from it, then I'm just safe. Yeah, if he's moving away as you're forward tilting, he's never gonna punish it. So yeah, yeah, I feel like you've given up like a lot of like four tilt spots. Like we could go all the way back to the beginning of the match. I feel like four tilt. There's a four tilt there, there too. There's a four tilt there. There. Four tilt I here. I'm there. always afraid of him with punishing my F tilt. Mm -hmm. Why am I so worried about that? I guess it. I mean, it is part of the mix up, but it's like. I think you should be more specific because I think in all yeah, yeah. all of these spots, except for the one mix-up that we talked about in relatively deep detail, the one where he's he has slight frame advantage and you're at the specific spacing, all the other four tilts you could have done were pretty safe. <laughs> yeah. 
because just because like Fox was doing another action at the time, so it's like this is the mix up one. This forward tilt would have been fine because you got shot behind him, right? And he's in lag. Um, this forward tilt would have been fine. Like, you would have done walk forward or run forward, forward tilt or whatever. And it would have been fine because you're just, like, playing neutral. This forward tilt would have been fine because he was running, shining past you and was going to end up being in, like, wave dash lag, right? Right. And so it's, like, all these running shines... Or not running shines. All these forward tilts are, like, pretty explicit just, like... Press the forward tilt button in this spot. Press the fucking button. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't... I don't think there's much, like, nuance or, like... Technically, there's obviously other things you could play, but it's just press the forward tilt button. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, this happened. I played, I played the shield position pretty poorly. Yeah. I think I... I always hate rolling, even though it's really good against Fox. Yeah, Sheik's roll is busted, and Fox... Can't, like, cover Sheik's roll once he already, like, goes crazy. Once he goes okay. in... Oh, you see, see, he runs <laughs> off. Really and split. There. Oh, I bust. I fucked it up. This oh, is I technically should... another way you could do it. Doing the um, that like that's technically a thing you could do. I think it doesn't really matter, but it definitely is harder. Yeah. I, okay. Like my <laughs> my thinking in this situation was like, oh, I need to try the the Nair thing that Billy told me about so long ago. <laughs> I fucked up the execution. I was like, oh shit, what do I do now? Mm-hmm. This needle situ this situation that eventually ends up in a needle happens a lot too. I was like so safe and then I don't know what happened. I feel like the issue is you jumped for no reason. Uh, and then uh, after jumping, you did not react well to his full hop. Yes. Right. So it's like this jump probably wasn't that great. You were pretty safe. All you had to do is like wave dash away and turn around, right? It's an invincible flock. So you're not going to hit him, right? Jumping doesn't yes. do anything. And then. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And then once you get past that spot to here. It should be, since you're doing literally nothing, there's no reason for you not to just short hop bear. Right? Uh huh. And, and it would just hit this air. Yeah. Okay. Well you're, doing, well, you're doing it on reaction to the full hop, right? So I don't think it'd be a mix. It'd just be like, you just full hop, you just bear, and it just hits. Right? Yeah, I think for some reason, I don't. I don't have any confidence that the bear, bear will hit, but. You do, so I should just do it. Well, it's like, can you just, like, visualize it that, like, Fox jumping, you start your short hop now, and then you just do bear. It's the same thing that I was talking about before oh, with, like, the angle, yeah. right? Okay. It's like, when I react, it's like, it's, the, the, my bear is fast. It's like, my short hop bear is three plus four. Yeah, seven. three plus so four, I think. Yeah, so even if I, it, yeah, okay, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, and it's like, we could count the frames and go through it. No, we don't have to. I know, yeah. I know that it will hit. But it's just like, this is like a thing. If you see Fox full hop and you're standing on your platform like this and you're it's at this spacing, bear. you literally can just bear every yeah. single time and you literally will not get hit because he you are reacting to the full hop, right? Yes. Yeah. And this should be like a free hit for you. And what should happen is you get this bear and then you like wave dash under up tilt or you get this bear and then you do like bear and then like a second bear you hit the bear and then you yeah. like wave land on like plat and then the dash fair or something yeah, yeah like you yeah. do like some mix up off of it but this should be like a really good position for you now it's like you're instead, a... instead i just get fucked yeah i didn't do anything afterwards yeah. now you're 90 percent chic in the corner and then <laughs> and i like that fair was never gonna hit him either yeah i agree you're like and we're then... doing the fair because you realized the full hop but it was like way way too late and then I yeah. feel like these needles are pretty greedy too, because Fox is literally just on a different plane. Yeah, yeah. I think this is, these are they are not that good. Yeah. Well, I got out too, but then I like for some reason dash chance on the platform. Yeah. He like let me out, and I just didn't take it. I feel like Wait. forcing your way in the center here honestly wasn't that great either. Just because it's like you threw the needles and you had to traverse from here all the way to literally over here to actually be safe. Because Fox doing full hop rising bear hits this area, right? So you had to literally uh -huh. be all the way over here. And so I, I feel like it was pretty greedy to like try and like play it that way. And of course you like delay your thing and land on the platform. To make it like, even easier. Yeah, but I feel like after so throwing these I needles, about, I mean, so. I would just like crouch Watch. or go to ledge, yeah. Or shield. Either sure. just, it's literally just, you fucked up, you now have to take it. Okay. Yeah, right, so it's just like, that's like several times this game now where I've been really greedy out of certain spots, so I should definitely look think mm -hmm. about when I'm being greedy. Mm. Oh, 
I don't yeah, know I feel like you just aren't here. reacting. This first yes. needle's fine, but I feel like at this point you can tell by the air dodge and either decide to like fast fall to the ground or like turn around. I never think about fast falling to the ground. Yeah. I think I should practice that tech skill for sure. Um, and then that Ferris rebat, and then here it's like you've realized that he's air dodging, but Fair obviously is just we'll not never hit. hit right, and so you yeah. have to play like the position differently. Okay. I feel like this happening, the fact that you like he ran literally full screen and you like jumped and double jump away kind of says a lot about like how you should jump as she because I feel like sure you had like a reason to jump here because you like could have read him running forward. I also feel like the way you did the jump was to specifically, like, it looked like it was specifically to beat this exact dash forward. If you just did late there, it would have hit him in the face. Yeah, I think I was, I didn't trust my decision for some reason. Because it would have hit. Yes. Like, I'm, like, seeing it now and it would have hit. But it's, like, I think I, like, what was I thinking? When I... This is, like, a, one of my brain off moments, I think. It's, like, I'm, I'm, like, I see him move towards me and I, like, and I didn't pay attention to the range that it started at. So it's like, oh, I'm like, he can just, what if he hits me? I don't want to get hit on the ground now, so I should just go to the side. But then he ends up hitting me anyway. Yeah, I feel like this is kind of the thing that you're talking about at first, where it's like your brain just like goes into fucking CRT, uh, what's it called? Static noise when yeah. you, we, like you get to like kind of a position. Because I feel like this is just like, you jump at this space and you see the fox dash forward, you bear. I click bear, yeah, because he can't, it's like I hit the bear and then he can't punish it. Yeah, and it's even like. Even if he like dodges it. Yeah, and it's like if you want to be defensive, you could honestly fast fall to the ground and shield, or it right. with this wave land, you just wave land and shield, but you like didn't shield, you just like did nothing. Yeah. Because I feel like you shouldn't have even gotten hit here even after making the mistake. Yeah, watching this vod, like watching the vod over, it's like I see that I saw that, and I was like, "Oh, why? How did that even happen?" And then that was kind of troll too. Yeah, I feel like this is a very classic chic. The fox gives you like a moment to breathe, but then you do like seven random buttons that like could have been just like you holding forward on the gray stick. Yeah, I, like I think in my mind I saw him on the side, uh, and I thought it's time to bear, but I was so far away from him and I wasn't already set up, so it's like, oh, I messed up. Yeah, I feel like if you, like, wanted to set it up, you set it up by going into center stage. Like, how you'd set it up is literally by, like, running to here and then stopping. And then you'd just do, like, dash back bear or, like, you know, turn around bear in place or whatever. But, like, you, like, didn't set it up that way until yeah, super late. Yeah, I was late. so far away. Yeah. Yeah. I stopped super far away. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's not going to work. Oh, you should be able oh. to grab this every time. Yeah. It's, it's just wave dash grab. I haven't practiced that. That's something I used to practice a lot, and I need to get back to it. Oh, not easy. What happened here? Oh, I messed up my reaction on that. I feel like wave landing forward there was super duper duper greedy and not good. Because like, the I... issue is like you do this fair, you're spaced, and then you jump. And this jump is actually totally fine. You could, you know, jump wave land down, jump wave land back. Or, like, honestly, maybe jump and, you know, fucking do whatever. But, like, Waveline Forward is, like, you do the jump here because the fox is in this range, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. And so it's, like, why put yourself exactly, like, next to him? And obviously he moved forward, but, like, look at the spacing you're at. If he stayed where he was, it's still bad, right? Yeah, this was a CRT static moment for sure. I, like, got on, I, like, jumped and I was, like, oh, I want to, oh, look. Uh, what is what was I thinking in this situation? I was like, oh, I just want to do something aggressive towards the middle, but I didn't like think about whether or not that was a good idea. Oh. I was like, like in my mind, I was like, oh, this feels tricky, but it wasn't. A, it wasn't, and B, I also like it also doesn't give me a good position anyway. Yeah, yeah. I feel like um, it's just like. Um, the, how do I say this? It, yeah, I don't know. I don't have any more thoughts. I agree with what you said. 
Uh, this was pretty bad awareness just after the upspin. It's like you can't get a runoff there. Probably stay on stage. Yeah. Uh, wow, you set the thing up and you didn't do it in this position. If you when you jump like this, you could check if they double jump after the slide off and just fair on reaction. I didn't know if that worked or not, so I just wanted to be safe. I think. Yeah, it works. You can just fair, and it's like it just hits the drill. It hits in there. It hits whatever move they do oh. and just fall into it. Oh yeah, if I had fared, I would have huge gun smoked. I think I what is it? I oh I wasn't checking for a slide off. I think. I didn't know that. I didn't even know this thought I was going to happen. That's not why I did it. I just mm. did it because I like something in my brain told me that he could land in this air, but then it would make even less sense that it didn't fare. So okay, yeah. I should just fare him there. Oh. oh wow, this is so weird. He's full hopped past you, and you aren't super oh, ready. That was late. Mm. Oh, I that was not great. <sighs> what happened here? I feel like that double jump was kind of awkward, and then jumping there was really, really, really. Yes, I feel like this is I... like pretty similar to the spacing we were talking about initially, and like this is like the spot where you can just like wave dash back. Like you don't need yes. to like if you really want to like do something and be slightly safer, you could just wave dash back. You don't need to like jump. Yes. Oh, well, I punched him. That was good. I meant to dash back. Oh my god. Oh my <laughs> what god. What happened here? Oh my god. I messed up. What is happening? This... I don't know what happened. I don't. I didn't even need to do that. I don't think. You could simply. Just dash forward fair. <laughs> I know. I think I, w I was afraid of getting burned, even though... You have a big fair with a big move, and you should uh, yeah, use it. Yeah, okay. I just... I did... As soon as that happened, I was like, why didn't I dash forward fair him? And then it made me mess up the tech skill in the next situation, because I was, like, thinking about how I messed up. <laughs> yeah. That should never happen. That shine should never happen. I agree. Uh, something uh, I just thought of... I know we're getting close to time or whatever, but... Something I just thought of that I feel like would make sense, given what I've watched, is that I feel like... <laughs> your idea of the corner as Sheik against Fox is that like when you're in the corner you're just in like a or like maybe like just an off center or whatever but it, from watching it feels like you see that as like an exclusively bad position regardless yes and I yes. do not think that is the case yes I think I think a lot of my emotional turmoil around the matchup is around like is around the idea that I could how do I put this it's like he could hit me at any time, so therefore any like and when I'm in the corner, I have less ways to avoid it, so avoid or mitigate it, so therefore like it's either I go sicko mode and do some crazy thing or I like play an extremely de play in an extremely defensive way when that mm. just isn't true based on what we've talked. Like it's like he still has to win a mix up. He there's like ways that it could go poorly for him. Like, if he misses his move, for example, and then he's in the corner, like, that's not great for him either. Yeah. Like, okay. I feel like watching this game, I have seen probably one corner position that was, like, really bad. The only one, every other corner position you ended up in was, like, probably, like, a 55-45 neutral split for Sheik. Like, they've all been, like, totally okay. And I I'm going to go back to the beginning just to kind of, like, like the point because it's like we can just like look and see like and talk about what makes each of them not actually that bad one second something in my oven smells burning so okay yeah, yeah. good check good check hmm <sighs> Cool. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Um, let's start from here. This corner position isn't actually okay. bad because it's like Fox, like the only thing Fox can do to meaningfully hit you is actually only grab. Right. And grab obviously loses to you doing like almost any like actual button or you doing any evasive maneuver like jump or spot dodge or roll. Um, and then even in this spot, after the Nair, nothing bad yeah. happens, you just roll. Um, that was good. And I mean, that this was just a good that position. Could have been I good, mean, yeah. yeah. This is a good position. Mm -hmm. um, you miss your thing. This is a totally fine position. Fox can't touch you, and it ends up going yeah, well. Yeah, that was like the one corner situation played well. Yep. Yeah. And then... and then this one that happens, it's like not really corner, but it's kind of close to corner. This is a totally like 
technically you're engaged in the mix-up, and maybe you it, maybe it's bad because you didn't get the pick, but you still have a lot of things that like you could just pick from, and you could ha- you Sheik in this position has like a decision that makes her just like super safe, and that's just holding shield. Holding right. shield means you only lose to sh- grab, and if grab. Fox raw grabs again, it loses to you doing anything essentially, and so it's like. I feel like if you have a decision that like is super safe and lets you get out, which would be shield into like roll or whatever, then that makes it that means a position can't be that bad if you have a thing that's really hard to deal with that just lets you get out right. Right. Um, um okay. So like not in a bad position, that was fine. Here, you just roll because you nerd your shield, right? This is like this one's not meaningful either. He could have like done jab grab, but at this point you just nerd your shield and you just roll the center stage, right? You could shield grab, shield grabbing's good. You could nerd a shield, nerd a shield's good. Um, and it's like, this is actually like a pretty advantageous spot for you, honestly. Um, yeah, that was freaky. Now you should die. Cool. Just very briefly, I know we're running out of time. How does the nair on shield situation work again? It's like, he nares my shield and then I get to um, it dep- way dash out, nair shield. Without with that height specifically, since he did it so high, you just shield grab it or narrow the shield. Okay. And if you're unsure, you react late. You roll. That's okay. just it. Um, okay. With ones that are later, um, doing stuff like wait after shine, narrow the shield, or like wave dash forward after like if he does like a later nair, that just means you play the mix up after shine, right? So you either yes. do like wave dash forward to read shine, wave dash back, or you do you know narrow the shield to read him doing short hop. Out of the shine or um you yeah. continue holding shield because he's gonna do like nair shine or something right or shine nair so yeah that's like that dichotomy it's not not too complex okay um okay. Yeah, we can look at more this yeah, one was fine bear. that one's fine yeah this one he couldn't have hit you directly in like an unreactable way because of how fur you were so and then he full hops so you just get to bear you don't yeah. bear. Um, and you play it pretty greedily. Then you die. Okay, cool. Uh, here, I feel like... I don't know if you've... Have you even gone this far? Maybe you have. Like, that jump was just pretty bad, honestly. Yeah, this, this is now new territory. I think. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, this... You just, like, weren't reacting when you did the bear. I feel like... You should have, like... If I reacted to him lasering, then I could have done something like Yeah, that. you could have just, like, empty landed, right? I don't think you needed to bear. Yes, because of how far he was, you mean? Yeah. Oh. So. Yeah, okay, no. Uh, is this a random yeah, position I forgot? This is fine. You play it like it's fine. Cool. And here's the thing where he's slide off double jump, so I fair yeah, him. Yeah, fair. That was, yeah, it should have been I... a true whiff punish on his full up. Yeah, yeah, and then weird stuff happens, and then I try to CC doesn't really work okay yeah okay this we are at an hour ish and yeah. i want to be respectful of your time so yeah okay um i mean the biggest things we covered honestly were it was really just like it wasn't anything super crazy but it was um and we didn't really get to cover like the practice stuff but the biggest takeaways are understanding fox's like threat range and then knowing like when you're in a mix-up understanding like the amount of time you have to do do a thing Right, so that like um, jump ends up being less good because you're more likely to get hit. Obviously, it's still a part of a mix up. Um, there's the things that we talked about with jump in general, where it's like how jump works is it takes since it takes a lot of time, the way that you use it ends up being further away to make up for the amount of time it takes um, because they'd have to traverse that space right to get to you. So right. It would. Either ju- right. It's like I need to jump, use the jump from further away, or jump in a way that gives me more space, like backflip. Yeah. Um. There was the rising bear stuff for covering Fox coming from like the vertically horizontal, um, yeah. position, which is really important because you actually had like two, I think, or three free Big bears. Bear. I should have been in a good position. Um. Oh. Uh. The like. The corner position and not and being more mindful of when i like how he can meaningfully try and oh yeah 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 exactly yeah because i feel like in a lot of the ones you like kind of 
did a poor job reacting or didn't realize that you kind of just had an out a lot of yeah. the time and you weren't actually like in a bad spot <laughs> you just like generalized yeah. Oh, right yeah um that's honestly all i have i think okay obviously the things you talked about were like pretty varied and like Pretty specific, I guess, in terms of the actual situation we went over, but I think we covered a lot of like pretty conceptual stuff for Sheik, honestly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, okay, what I wrote, I think probably in terms of practicing stuff, like I'll probably, I'm gonna practice doing like bears. I, like, I don't know how else to say it. It's like, I need, like, just gonna practice bear tech skill. Mm -hmm. Um, what else am I gonna practice? Uh, I'll probably like just get more comfortable. I'll just like get more comfortable with Fox like hitting my shield and like I'll just I don't know like just watching him do it might help. Yeah, honestly, you could just watch a Fox hit like Plup's shield and Plup plays a lot of the mix-ups pretty well, presumably. Yeah, uh, and see what happens. Um, trying to think of other things to practice. Uh... It's like bear bear tech skill. Uh, oh, like falling to the ground from the top. Yeah, that's something we talked about. That's something that came up that twice that you could have done. Yeah, there was like the platform stuff we talked about, where it's like when you end up on platform, like what your goals are or whatever. But yeah. I think if you just watch like club play platform for like a second, with like that in mind, you would be like, oh yeah, it makes sense. He wants to set up a good spacing where he wants to wait for someone to hit him. That's like. Honestly, kind of it, and then you end up yeah. on the ground. Like, okay, yeah, okay, and then okay. I mean, I there, I wrote a lot of things down, and there's probably, I think probably the yeah the big thing I we wrote down all the big things. I think which mm -hmm. is like understanding its threat range, knowing when I'm in a mix up, uh, and that will help me decide whether or not I should f tilt or jump. Yeah, uh, I can. I need to recognize when he's in a diagonal position so that way i can do back air yep um corner position thinking about when he can meaningfully threaten me in uh the specific specifically like thinking about how valuable shield is uh shield value and then also um in terms of platform movement thinking about where i want to end up and how and sort of evaluating whether or not I mean, like the, the the specific situations that came up where I just have I just moved to the center very greedily, and I should reevaluate that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, I agree with all that. I'm okay. scared. Okay. That sounds good, and I'm sure you and I. I mean, you and I, Kevin. We will just talk in between then. Yeah, okay. you could just message me about anything, and I will simply. Yeah, you could. Okay. When do you tend it. to do uploads, by the way? I upload almost immediately after. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, that will be good for me to listen to, so that way I can take notes, or I can like make timestamps for myself and also... <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, cool. Okay, have a good rest of your day. Later. Yep, see ya.